Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Zareth Prevails. Guys, the divisions are going to be changing soon. We've got all the different squads that are going to be coming out, and uh, that's kind of, GAC is kind of my area of expertise, if you can say that I have any level of expertise in this game. And so I wanted to talk a little bit about what the changes are, what they're going to look like for all of us, and how kind of how to adapt and what to expect. I'm going to make this into kind of a mini-series. I'll just try to do once a week. Hopefully we can, you know, get more and more specific, ratcheted in as we get closer to it. Uh, but it, it's going to be exciting. We we have we only have three more weeks of the old style until CG changes it, and it, it's going to be good. This is going to be focused more on people who are going to be in divisions one and two. So I think people in three, four, and five are going to get some use of it as well. People after that, uh, right now, CG, it's kind of a mess. CG has kind of said like, hey, you you guys have few, are going to be deploying fewer squads, and uh, it's, it, it's not going to be great uh, right now. But I do think that they're going to fix things. I, I can't imagine that it's going to actually stay the same as it has been, uh, or as if they announced. So... You know, I, it doesn't really pay to speculate further on that right at this moment. So, that being said, guys, I uh, want to talk today about kind of what to expect, what kind of bro in broad strokes, what what can we expect, and how to how are some of the things, how, what kind of characters can we be developing, how are we going to be planning our squads and splitting things up, and uh, yeah, so let's let's start working on that, guys. Let's. Let's get it done. Let's transition to the game, just so I can show you guys a little bit more in depth of what I'm talking about. All right, folks, so here we are in on my account. You can see my latest victim. No, <laughs> it's my, my round one opponent. We're actually just finished round three. You guys don't know what the end result is unless you watch my live stream which I highly recommend. It's in links uh, twi in Twitch. Come watch me live sometime, guys, or watch the replay. And it doesn't have as much depth of strategy, but uh, it's still it's shorter, certainly. So that being said, uh, first I wanted to talk about, like, what are we going to expect for zone coverage? And I, I don't really want to get super in-depth in here because CG might just change things up. But right now, uh, we're going, right now we see, uh, like, a two... Uh, in 5v5 we see two squads two squads and three respectively two on the bottom two on the bottom and three on top if we add four squads for division one it's probably going to look exactly like it does for us in 3v3 currently which is three on the front bottom uh and then in the back it's going to be four and four up top so it's going to be tough in 3v3 man or in 5v5 it's going to be tough to get to that back zone to get that perfect information we're really going to have to work on uh, being able to cheaply beat the squads in front so that we can see what's in the back without without breaking us like if someone puts four galactic legends in, squads in the back what what we use in that front zone becomes paramount to what we to uh, we, how we do things so you know that it's going to be huge for baiting people like being able to hide as much as we'll be able to hide back there is going to be crazy um <coughs> excuse me um anyways we it, that's going to be huge in 5v or 3v3 it's going to be even crazier it's going to be if they evenly distribute it it's going to be 5 5 and 5 for division 1 and then if, if for division 2 people it's probably going to they're going to take one from the front bottom zone but can you imagine you have to kill five squads up front just to get to the back like it's going to allow for some seriously intense trapping and so once again like being able to develop teams that can cheaply beat the squads in the front without actually like selling selling the farm for the back zone it's going to be huge like if you want to get a full clear which is going to be also pretty important to making kyber uh you know it always has been but even still like now it's going to be crazy we're going to really need to um <laughs> we're gonna need to have some cheap counters to a lot of these like meta teams people are going to be putting darth revan down etc and we're going to we're gonna have to find ways around them, even multi shot them potentially. Like it's going to become much more of a slog slugfest. I think my guess is that 
we're going to in 5v5, we're going to start seeing some really crazy, uh, some really crazy trapping schemes to be like, okay, I I'm going to put one squad that, uh, just to throw a random team out, this is what we used to do, like, okay, we're going, I'm going to make it so that, um, you know, I have a squad that only Treya can beat, okay? So we're, we're gonna put that in the back zone, and then what we're gonna do, I'm gonna put squad, like, I'm gonna put four squads up front that say, <laughs> that, that are counterable by Treya easily, and if you can get Treya to be used on one of those four teams, then in the back, if they have Treya, if they have that squad that only Treya can beat, and I know this is a silly, uh, a silly example because Trey is not like the pinnacle anymore. But uh, if if you've already used Treya up in the front zone, and this, there's a squad in the back that only Treya can beat, then you're screwed. You don't have a way to beat that squad, and you've already like so. You, people are going to get more elaborate. You're going to have more ability to leech resources from people, and it's going to be very interesting uh, to see what kind of schemes people put in. Uh, like right now, what the, a lot of what people do, I, what I see is people are like, okay, if I can get them to use Sith Eternal in the front zone, then then I put like Jedi in the back, then they're not going to be able to beat my Jedi because Sith Eternal is already gone, etc. So. Uh, maybe that was a more pertinent example, but I think that that's something we all we're all gonna have to uh, become accustomed to. The trapping game has already it's I mean that's my bread and butter currently. It's going to get even crazier, guys. I wish we'd add new zones so we could do even more crazy things, but even still, like the trapping game is going to be it's gonna be on, folks. Uh, the defensive play is going to be super important. Uh, something else I want to point out too, guys. Our matchup GP is going to shift significantly toward people with efficient rosters. Like, think of right now, so people who don't know what matchup GP is, what they do, this is how we get paired in GAC. And uh, I, I really can't spend a huge amount of time on this video explaining it, but what it is, is however many squads we're going to deploy, it, we take that many characters. So, uh, for instance, if we're in going to be in Division 1, that's going to be 11 teams in 5v5, and they're going to... They're going to uh, require five characters in each squad. So that's 55 characters on defense. And then, it, theoretically, if you use full squads to beat those, uh, those full squads on defense, you're going to have 55 offensive characters as well. So a total of 110 characters. And what it does, you just add up your top 110 characters by GP. And uh, let's see, I think it's my power here. Um, and that's your matchup GP number. And I think ships are also included. Who knows though, right now, CG hasn't been super forthcoming on how many ships are included here. So we're just going to ignore that for now. Um, but the, pa the, the pertinent issue is instead of right now, we're using like top 70, uh, we're going to instead get stuck in, <laughs> we're going to be stuck on the like top 110. It's going to be crazy, like 40 new characters just added to consideration. And so, you know, like I, I went through and looked at it and I, my line is right around here, guys, right around Bo-Katan or Hero Poe, Holdo, something like that. Um, and so right now, when I get paired with someone, none of these characters below are actually included in any of their calculations. So like, I think I could actually get Spy up a couple more Relic levels and it wouldn't even, it wouldn't even scratch my matchup GP. So uh, what what ends up happening, guys, is uh, you know if you get these crazy mismatches and people people are angry about, oh man, this is so dumb. Where you know we get matched up with people who we shouldn't. It's because people put relic sevens on so many characters. Like Asajj right now is one of my characters that's in the top seventy. However, um, <laughs> she she's uh, only relic three. If I get her to relic seven. She's going to have a higher GP, and I'm going to get matched up with someone with higher matchup GP as well. So, uh, the implications right now, though, guys, are it's like, okay, so we're in Bo Katan, Hero Po range. You know, that's top 70. And then, what? So, this is like top 82, something like that, 90 something. Uh, so, so you like, you get down to like your, your Snow Trooper Akbar levels. And, I mean, I have most of my guys relic and everything. Um, 
Here's the thing though, folks. I think that we're going to start seeing an era of Relic Zero becoming a thing now. Like being, being really efficient on Relics is going to become paramount for what we want to do for matchups. And especially in the lower divisions, like if you can keep most of your roster at Relic Zero and just have a really robust, like flat, deep roster, that's going to really, really benefit you in the long run. Because um, as it stands, it's like <laughs> every time I put a Relic level on someone now, it's actually going to impact my matchups. And having good, efficient characters for those matchups is going to be important. The other thing to uh, kind of pay attention to, folks, I know I've probably rambled too long for some of you about this uh, matchup GP. The other thing I want to point out, though, is the fact that your matchup GP for 5v5 is going to be significantly different from the matchup GP in 3v3. Uh, so let's see, I, I did the like a little bit of math here. Um, so right now for 5v5, it's top 70. Um, you know, in top 66 or something for 3v3, I believe. And um, now we're gonna have to, in 5v5, we'll have top 100 or top 110. So like like I said, relic efficiency is going to be really important. And then in 3v3, um, it, th this is where the crazy difference is, guys. So it, let's say we're in division one and our matchup GP is top 110. In 3v3, it's only going to be top 90 because we're going to be using fewer squads. Like we're just, they're just adding four squads to each uh, 3v3 and 5v5, which means instead of adding 40 characters uh, in 5v5 to division one, uh, you're only adding 24 total characters in division three. So, or in division one for 3v3. So it, it's a huge dis, uh, like a huge difference. And it's going to be really interesting. Like in 5v5, We'll get paired up with the same group, you know, every time we're in 5v5, like the same kind of people. And then once we go to 3v3, like our, our rosters will look different in that, you know, 20 character difference. And suddenly you're going to be paired against different people. So it's like, we're going to start having things that say like, oh, well, I have a good, like, I have an efficient 3v3 roster, but we, I don't. Like, I have a really bloated 5v5 roster, etc. So, gonna be interesting, like, it's going to start being like, do we start removing mods from characters we never use? Like, if I never use, I don't know, Maul, do I just take his mods off just so that I can get a little more efficiency on my GP? I'm just not sure. You guys will have to watch me to <laughs> watch my videos to see what I end up doing with my matchup GP. I'm guessing my for my main, I'm not going to do anything, but my alts may end up doing some weird stuff. So, um, otherwise, guys, let's talk a little bit about kind of squads that we're going to be taking, and then I'll try to get you out of here. So, um, let's see. Uh, here, here's the thing, guys. We're going... If you want to start working on characters right now, here are some impact characters. Like, first off, I think Nest is going to... She, like, right now, I, I've stopped being able to use her to solo teams. There's just not that opening. But I think one... She, she's going to be way more relevant in uh, in the new divisions. Like, she's going to start... She's going to start getting some kills. Uh, Wampa, I... People have said, like, ooh, my Wampa's gonna be... I'm gonna be soloing people. And it's like, okay, so... That might happen sometimes. You you might see the stray, like, Phoenix squad and be able to... But, like, Phoenix isn't a good target for Wampa anyways. He There's very few things that Wampa can actually solo in the higher divisions. Like, if you're facing someone good, you're not gonna be able to use Wampa to solo someone. Same with Kylo, generally. We might start seeing some Old Republic on defense again. I do think that's going to happen. Kylo is going to be better than Wampa. Wampa is going to kill some stuff, sure, but he's going to need a support squad. Nest is going to go it alone. I think she'll be great. People are going to also say, like, okay, like, great, I'll, I'll also use Malak to do this. Um, and all I have to say is, if you use Malak to solo someone, uh, like, you're, you're going to be able to find some targets. Like, what are you doing with Darth Revan and Basti? Like, you're going to need a plan. I don't know that there's a great plan for that. Even with the bigger divisions, I almost think those three just need to stay together. That's my opinion. But um, the other thing is, guys, we're going to have to start distilling our squads down to their bare essentials. So it's like, okay, what makes Ray good? 
it, like not being able to kill her in, before she just murders their whole your whole squad, right? So, uh, it, like right now, the best Ray squad is going to have like Jedi training Ray. It's gonna have the Hero Bros. It'll have Holdo still, but um, like that that's the best squad, and you, we can afford to do that a lot, right? Like we can we can afford that. However, what can <laughs> what? How can we make this into two squads? Because in Division 1, I'm going to need 22 squads, and that's going to be rough. I have like 20 squads I trust, and then the rest is just going to be sketch. And, uh, you know, one of my videos here, uh, I'll show you guys the squads that I want to start working on, start doing. But um, we're going to start needing to do things like this, and I already do this, actually, in 5v5, kind of this kind of thing. Uh, not maybe not this exact squad, but like this Ray squad is still like the essentials. What what's the essential squad for Ray? Like how does she operate? It's going to be you um, you place her on defense potentially, and then she kills the entire opponent team by just being super resilient and you know being able to hit hard, etc. And those tanks are gonna help get you there. Uh, maybe not as quickly as the other squads, but if your opponent is using weaker teams, like this distillation of the squad is going to be better. Um, I know that my buddy Solo is working really, really hard to try to get Beskar, Mando with Quill and IG to stick, stay in the squad. That's another great version of it. Um, we'll see if he's actually successful. Like uh, Bando is gonna be a great squad on its own on offense. Very efficient banners, but. Uh, that's that's kind of beside the point. We have, uh, uh, you know, being able to split this squad into two though is going to be huge if we're going to need more squads. Um, similarly, guys, we need to figure out what characters. So we're gonna need to say like, okay, what's the bare essentials for each squad? So like Vader for me, I feel like Vader in general just needs Thrawn. Like they, those two need to go together. Um, I mean that's not always, but you know you need to be flexible and everything. But for the most part, like Thrawn goes where Vader does. And, uh, you know, Shore Trooper and Probe Droid are going to do a lot. Like, you're going to be able to counter most of the Jedi training, or of the Ray Galactic Legend Ray teams with Shore and Probe Droid. You're going to be able to do most of the things you want with those two. And then sometimes you'll need one more character. Like, you'll no longer can you really bring Treya for this squad, because Treya suddenly is her own squad. She's, you know... I know that a lot of people are like, well, yeah, of course, you, you're on the Sith Triumvirate, but, like, I don't hardly ever use that squad. Like, I, I win GAC a lot. I know that sounds cocky, but, I mean, like, I, I win a lot, and I don't need Treya as a squad. I, I just don't. I use her as a support for any number of other Sith teams, but I don't use her squad very often unless I want to just drop banners. Now... She's going to be like a, one of the premier awesome teams. So, um, what what other characters can we use to uh, kind of replace her? Like Probe Droid is one that we can do that for. So, being able to recognize where you know the core team and be able to operate within those means is going to be really important moving forward. And then finally, we have Padme here. Like these four. I know you can mix and match, take these characters off, but these are the four that, you know, are they go mostly together. Who's that fifth character going to be? You guys need to figure that out. Like, try to figure it out. Not a character who relies on turn meter manipulation, because Padme doesn't do it. Uh, trying to find, though, like, look at your teams and decide who that core is, and then who can you add. Like, I love adding Ayla Secura here. A lot of people are going to have her anyways because of the general, uh, because of the whatever, the Master Kenobi uh, requirements. So, like, Ayla's great here. She stuns, she uh, calls assists, she does all these cool things. Um, but who, who are you going to take here? Uh, th that's going to be important. Similarly, guys, how are you going to split up your Jedi? We don't have enough good Jedi. And I don't mean, like, we don't have enough level Jedi. Like, I, I still think, like, <laughs> my mace is Relic 3 now for the new requirements. And I'm not going to use him almost ever. He's worthless. He's so stupid. May maybe he can go with Jedi Master Luke. I, I don't know. But, um, you know... We're going to have four really, really great Jedi leaders coming up here. This uh, Kenobi here, this is a placeholder for the G Galactic Legend Kenobi. Um, uh, so, how are you going to distribute your, your Jedi? How are you going to be able to make that work? Like, that's something you guys need to be looking at as a whole. I don't have a good answer. Like, a lot of times we're just going to have to smash them all together uh, into some weird hodgepodge. But, like, 
if you need 22 teams or even just 20, it's going to be tough to find that, guys. Uh, finally, uh, we're going to need to be flexible. Having a flexible offense is so important. Uh, what teams are going to be flexible? Uh, you know, is going to be more important than like what teams you have on defense in some ways. Like defense, you can just put on, you can put in some like good hard squads that steal banners and call it good. But those banner stealing squads aren't squads that go that are going to do a lot of good on offense. So, uh, for instance, I'm going to like I re highly recommend like bounty hunters. Guys are so flexible these days. I I just recently killed a Darth Revan with them. Uh, you can kill, you know, Mon Mothma, other Bounty Hunter teams, First Order. The the list just goes on and on. Uh, like, really, it kills almost everything besides Galactic Legends. And uh, you need these squads, guys, because you need that flexibility. What What's in that back zone? I have no idea, but if they have four Galactic Legends back there, I can't burn my own Galactic Legends or my squads that kill Galactic Legends, and therefore, I'm going to need to use squads that are super flexible and kill a huge, wide range of teams so that I can get to the back zone without having expended my really good meta killers. So, things like Bounty Hunters, I just made two different uh, screenshots, you know, squads here for Bounty Hunters. Uh, really, Aura Sing adds so much viability to this squad. However, it does stop being as efficient because you have to then have six characters uh, done. I mean, one of the fixes being maybe you just take Django out and give him to Separatists, and then and then you can just add Boba in to both. Um, another squad that's going to be worth its weight in gold is the Mothma team. Uh, Fatal is contending that maybe he, you shouldn't be working on K2 or Cassian or something. He loves Poe. He loves him so much, and I think Poe is... Or pow is fine, but I don't know what whatever squad you guys think is going to be good. Um, it's not going to be with wigs probably or chase unfortunately, but uh, this squad is going to be able to kill a ton of different squads, ton of different comps. It's not just General Grievous or Night Sisters. It's going to kill a lot of different teams. So um, finally, we have oh, finally we have so I have a few others. Just uh, just things that you guys need to be looking at. So Treya, I've talked about about it before. This trio is going to be really good. Probably just the trio itself. Like put put more relics than I did on it, but. This team is going to start killing a lot of stuff. If you have all of your protection missing at the end, but you don't have two other characters, you'll still end up with a 59. So pretty strong, pretty efficient, uh, good undersized squad. Um, nice sisters, super versatile. You'd normally get 55 or 56 if spirit keeps evading, but uh, this squad, man, it, it kill. It's gonna kill so much. Like Grievous, pow Grievous's relative power is gonna go super high. Now, now that we have all these other squads in the mix, Nice Sisters can kill so many teams, guys, uh, that are all like B-level and below. The only reason we don't use them right now is we don't see many B-level teams because we can just compress all of our good characters onto the same weird teams. So, um, you know, that's not gonna stand. Uh, Jedi Training Ray, this squad is going to be so efficient, guys. It's We have two ways to regenerate protection here with, uh, with BB-8's Illuminated Destiny and then, of course, the Grenade of Healing from Finn. This squad on offense is going to be so good just because of the healing immunity that you can do, all of the turn meter manipulation, all of the crazy stuff. This team is super versatile against B-level teams. And then finally, First Order, um, the, the crew team is just really strong as well. Maybe not as strong anymore as the Jedi Training Ray team, unfortunately. If you can somehow spare Hux, or if you take Supreme Leader Kylo for offense, so that you don't rely on Hux, uh, then Hux on this team can be good. Though if you put Hux, Hux in, you can actually put it on defense. So not sure what, you, what I want to do with that. Um, but just a few teams that are going to help me get through that front zone and be able to find what's in the back. So anyways, guys, uh, I hope this... Let, let me know what you think of this series, what you want to see in it, like what kind of things you are personally thinking about for prep and what what things are going to be good. I, I would love to hear it. We can all learn from each other. Hopefully the comments have a lot of good ideas in them. And some of them, I'm, hopefully I can just uh, steal and put in my next video. And I'll try to give credit. I, I may end up, who knows, but... 
uh, as long as we can get that information out one way or another, guys. Uh, and if it really is like super pertinent uh, information, I, I said who knows. I, I want to make sure, like, <laughs> you know, if it's a generalized idea, I might not share it. But if it's something specific, like, you know, I do give credit to people, absolutely. So, that being said, I'm going to call it a day, guys. Thank you all so much for watching. And remember that in all things, Zareth prevails.